All right, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to Queen Amadai TV, More Than Meets the Third Eye. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your spiritual vitamins, okay, for members only. So please come in. Um, this isn't the master class, Mr. Hotel. This isn't the master class. This is just a, a shout out to your esoteric philosopher. Thank you, beloved. Okay, this is just a um a live for the members. The master class is at four o'clock, okay. Matter of fact, let's make it 415. The master class is at 415. Okay, so with that all being said, um, we're going to have some trivia questions at the end of this. All right, so hello, Mr. Hotel, Claudette, Kenyatta, Juju is in the house. Okay, and for those of you, hey, Samantha, Hundia is here, Ethelene, all right. Shout out to everyone tuned in, beloved. Okay, so Kathy B. Um, with that all being said, I think I saw Kathy B. Jonah. Okay, so what we're going to do is for all of you who have the um, higher frequency, the higher frequency memberships, I'm going to send you the email with the link for the master class. Okay, hey, Nessie. Nessie X. Um, I'm going to send you the link for the master class after this broadcast. Okay, I'm almost done with the PowerPoint. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get it started. I have a, um, a PowerPoint presentation I'm going to show you all today. We're going to be discussing uh, the writing on the wall. How many of you have heard that phrase before? Once in the chat, if you've ever heard the phrase, the writing is on the wall. Once in the chat, if you ever heard that phrase before, the writing is on the wall. Nobody's ever heard it before. Okay, Hundia said, is it me or screw two? I don't know. What's going on, Hundia? Okay, so some of y'all are saying you heard it before. Okay, great. All right, so if you've heard that before, then those of you who read the Bible or have read it previously know that it's from the Bible. There's a story in the Bible about, hey, that crazy beach Aries. There's a story in the Bible about the writing on the wall. So let's get into it. I'm going to pull up my um, my PowerPoint presentation and so we can go ahead and get this party started. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Okay, here we go. All right. The writing on the wall. And so where does the phrase... The writing on the wall come from when someone says the writing is on the wall they are normally referring to the fact that the answer is quite easy or is in plain sight however the true writing on the wall was not clear only daniel was called to interpret it now the writing on the wall we've probably heard this phrase before but did you know that it comes from the bible the story of the writing on the wall comes from the passage Daniel 5, uh, 5 through 31. Now, in this passage of the scripture, the king's, the grandson of King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, King Belshazzar, was throwing a big party and he commanded his servants to bring out the special goblets that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem's temple. And that's in Daniel 5, 1 through 4. Now, King Belshazzar wanted to impress his guest with the sacred silver and gold goblets from his grandfather. After his guest had drunk the wine from the goblets, a floating hand appeared and wrote a message on the wall. Now, this event was extremely frightening, as you could imagine. Just imagine a hand coming from out of nowhere and scribbling a message on the wall right before your eyes. OK, they probably thought they'd had too much to drink. Pay attention. Now, this event was extremely frightening for King Belshazzar to the point that his face went pale and his knees went knocking together. Now, he ordered for all of the astrologers, enchanters, and divin uh, diviners um, to, place, to be placed before him in order for them to read the message that was written on the wall as the writing had been in a foreign language that the king could not read himself. So it was in a completely different language. Sadly, 
None of the astrologers, enchanters, or diviners. Um, and these are, you know, the diviners are people who uh, practice divinity. Okay. They can um, tell the future and things like that. Div they practice the art of divination. Okay. So the diviners, even they couldn't figure it out. Wise men could read the writing. Um, after they couldn't read the writing either. After learning that none of these trained wise men could read the message, King Belshazzar was greatly perplexed. And quite frankly, he was afraid because he wanted to know what it said. Now, the queen comforted the king and told him that there was a man who could read the writing done on the wall because this man had helped his grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar. He'd helped him out in the past. The man's name was Daniel. Now, this would later be the same Daniel that was thrown into the lion's den, but was protected by God. So Daniel was a chosen one. Where does the writing on the wall come from? Well, Daniel was able to interpret the writing on the wall, and he reads the inscription to be Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parsin. Okay, Mene, Tekel, and Parsin are all units of measurement. Now, Daniel translates this message to King Belshazzar. He says, here is what these words mean. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to, brought it to an end. To Kel, that means you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Peres, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Parisians. I'm sorry, Persians. Given to the Medes and the Persians. Now, this is what he told him the message said. So clearly that wasn't good news, saying that his days were numbered, his kingdom's going to be given away because it's divided and all of that. So quite frankly, I'm sure he had concern. Thus, the writing on the wall foretold what was going to happen. God had numbered King Belshazzar's reign, and he was going to be slain that night. And King Belshazzar's, Belshazzar, Belshazzar's kingdom was going to be divided between the Medes or the Medes and the Persians. Within the night, King Belshazzar, uh, Belshazzar was killed and Darius, who was a Mede, became king. Now, this is the clear interpretation and meaning of the writing on the wall. If this is the true statement of the writing of the article, then why do people use it out of context? And the reason people use it out of context is because when people say, oh, well, the writing is on the wall. Well, they're saying it as if it's something that they already see and fully understand and already know and comprehend what's going to happen and what it means. But in this case, they didn't know what it meant. They couldn't even interpret it. They had to get a myriad of people to try to figure it all out and to decipher it. And they finally came upon Daniel, who was the only one that could. Now, the writing is on the wall. You have probably heard of the saying, and this saying comes directly from writing on the wall uh, in Daniel 5. As you can rightly assume, when people say the writing on the wall, they're saying that something is destined to happen, as if it's already been set in stone. Now, when an individual makes the statement, the writing is on the wall, they're normally referring to the fact that the answer is quite easy or is in plain sight and is usually about some inevitable end that's coming soon. Just like um, the king, his end was coming very soon. It was inevitable. It was already predestined to occur. However, the true writing on the wall was not clear to understand as Daniel had to interpret it. Now, the story of the writing on the wall is taken out of context due to the sad reality that many people are not well equipped in the scriptures. You see, many people read the scripture but don't fully understand it. And sometimes they'll uh, mischaracterize things or misquote things or not fully comprehend the message. Now, because the phrase is saying that something is destined to occur and should be easy to see, but the truth but in truth, a message on the wall in the scripture was not easy to decipher. It was almost like solving a puzzle. It had to be interpreted by a specific person. 
So the writing on the wall was written specifically for King Belshazzar. In the passage, King Belshazzar misuses the sacred goblets that were instilled in the kingdom during his grandfather's time. Now this can teach us not to misuse anything God has given us, whether that be spiritual gifts, monetary resources, and even our time. Whatever God has entrusted under our care, we need to care for it and treat it responsibly. You see, the thing is, uh, King Belshazzar only wanted to bring out the silver and gold goblets to impress his guest. That's what it was for. Those were sacred from his great from his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. But he, you know, wanted everyone to see them. That's why he wanted to use them at that time. Now, a second teaching that we can learn from this story is that each of our days are numbered, just like King Belshazzar. Today could be our last day alive. And you wouldn't even really know it, right? Unless you'd already been given a diagnosis, a diagnosis by a doctor or something. But as far as something just happening, like somebody walking out into the street, getting hit by a bus, being on a plane that crashes or anything like that, you just never know when it's your turn. Now, we need to live every day in light of the fact that it could be our final day. That's in Luke 12th chapter, 16th through the 21st verse. A final lesson that we can learn from this story is that we always need to be aware of our surroundings. I tell you all that all the time. So pay attention. Now, rather than throwing a party for his special guest, King Belshazzar should have been protecting his kingdom from any threats. Similarly, we need to use our time wisely and be responsible adults. Procrastination and failure to prioritize are both recipes for disaster. And see, that's what, what King uh, Belshazzar was doing. OK, he didn't prioritize rather than taking care of the kingdom and, and looking out to make sure everything was in order and there were no threats against him. He was busy partying, having a good old time, showing off and clout chasing by pulling out those silver and gold goblets, just trying to let everybody have a good time. The writings on the wall, Belshazzar's actions could have been prevented, preventable. He chose to indulge when his kingdom needed to be prepared for war especially on the heels of his father and grandfather's deaths. People would have seen the death of Nebuchadnezzar as a weak spot for the kingdom and the best moment to strike. So common sense should have told him that your grandfather is dead. Now your enemies know that there's a weak spot. Okay. There's a kink in the armor, in the chain. But rather than thinking about all that, honey, he had better things to do. So he thought till it was too late. And so may we learn from Belshazzar's mistakes when we see the writing on the wall and learn to exercise more humility and dignity in our most dire of situations. Then we won't have to fear like Belshazzar did. So all of a sudden, after he got that bad news, after somebody interpreted what that writing really said, now he wants to get worried. But he wasn't worried before that. He was having the time of his life. Honey, Belshazzar said, I'm out here living my best life, honey. Forget what you heard. Okay, that's what he was doing. Uh, so honey, I said, screw tube won't load. Are you still having issues, beloved? That's crazy. I don't know what's going on with them. <laughs> Miss Hotel said, child, I'm sipping on my hot chocolate listening. Okay, so anyway, listen. Uh, that was just a brief, um, a brief story, a breakdown of the writings on the wall. But here's the thing. You see, sometimes in life, the writing is on the wall. And like King Belshazzar, we don't understand it. We can't interpret it. You see, and the reason is because we don't want to. Because the writing on the wall is sitting there right there in front of us and we're looking at it now. In his case, he couldn't interpret it because it was in a foreign language that he could not read or understand. So he had to get someone else to help him. But in many of the cases with us in reality, we see the writing on the wall and we know exactly what it means, but we don't want it to mean that because we don't want what's coming, the unfor the uh, the event that's going to occur, we don't want it to happen. For example, someone's in a relationship with someone who's a liar, a cheater. You know, they're always asking you for money, trying to get you to cover their share of the bills, perhaps. I'm just talking hypothetically. Uh, maybe they're lazy or they're always slacking. They can't keep a job. They can't do what they're supposed to do. And the way they're supposed to do it. So you move in with them or let them move in with you. 
And then after the first month or two, they're not paying bills. They're getting behind. You're having to come out of the pocket more and more. So you see the writing on the wall. You already should know, okay, this isn't going to work out. I'm going to be stuck paying everything. I should have never let them move in. I'm going to eventually have to get rid of them and find somebody else or just pay everything for myself because I don't want to take care of this grown person. This isn't going to work out. But even though the writing's on the wall, some people don't want to face the reality that their relationship is not going to work out. So they just keep on putting up with it, hoping that things will eventually get better. But they never do. Because usually when people show you who they are, well, they're, they're not lying. That's absolutely who they are. So that crazy beast Eris had been there. Okay. Can you get us a responsibility of knowing? Absolutely. Miss Hotel said, that's right. Folks see what they want to see. Yes. Some people choose to look at things through rose-colored glasses, okay? Some people don't want to realize and see the truth. But at the end of the day, the writing on the wall is usually preceded by some red flags, okay? By at least a few red flags. And whether or not you want to sit there and ignore the signs and warnings, you want to act like you don't see that writing on the wall, you want to just continue partying and having a good time and not prioritizing and procrastinating on what you really need to do, you want to act like uh, Belshazzar, well, you just go right ahead, but you're going to wake up one day and see yourself in a panic, just like he did, okay, so let that be a lesson to each of you, don't procrastinate, prioritize, Make sure you're paying attention to your surroundings because that's another thing Belshazzar didn't do. If he'd been paying attention to his surroundings, he would have seen that the enemies were actively plotting on his demise. He would have seen that his kingdom was about to fall and that someone else was going to take over. He didn't see any of that. All he saw was having a good time, showing off the clout chasing and getting those silver and gold goblets out so they can sip on that wine. That's what he saw. Okay? And so... It's all about doing your due diligence, okay? That's what it's all about. Doing your due diligence and staying on top of the game. Keep your head on the swivel, like they say. All right, so that all been said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I hope you all learned something from this, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Ha! I forgot about the trivia just that quick. I said I'm going to conclude the broadcast. Pay attention. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions for the trivia. You're going to have 40 seconds to give your answers. All right. And I trust that these answers should be so easy for you all to come up with uh, for the simple fact of uh, that there was only one other than the one today, but there was only one members only live that I did this week, I believe. And that's the one I did yesterday where I read from the book Acts of Faith, uh, Daily Meditations for People of Color. So the questions are coming from that live that you all saw yesterday, not the premieres, because some of you may not have watched the premieres because you've already seen them, okay? Uh, so with that all being said, the answers are supposed to be sent uh, to the root of all evil 227 at gmail.com. Let me pull up my email so we can go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm only going to ask two questions. On the other channel, I asked four questions because there's so many more people, okay? But on this one, I'm only going to ask two questions. Uh, so hopefully somebody has these answers because, like I said, these are easy questions. And you only had one live that you should have been paying attention to, and that's the one from yesterday. So let's get into it. No answers in the chat. All right, and here we go. You'll have 40 seconds to answer after I repeat the question twice. And then the first one that gets the correct answer in, in the allotted amount of time, is the winner. So here's the question. So yesterday, when I was talking about um, reviewing the book or reading excerpts from the book, Acts of Faith, Daily Meditations for People of Color by Yala Van Sat, I spoke in one of the um, sections that I read from, I spoke about fish different types of fish that we meet in life or people that behave like certain types of fish, shall I say. It was really an analogy where they used fish to compare them to the behaviors and actions of humans. So there was a fish called, um, well, I'm not going to tell you the name of it. That's what I'll do. I'll let you all give me the name of the fish. So one of the fish, I said, this fish is always in the way, gets in the way and won't stay out of the way. What fish was that? 
A fish that gets in the way won't stay out of your way and is always in the way. What fish is that? 40 seconds on the clock. 40 seconds on the clock. Juju said stick with four, queen. No, nope, it's only two questions on this channel. I never give y'all four questions on this channel anyway, I don't think. You got 25 seconds left and counting. Let me see if anybody got it. Jonah got the answer. Time is up. Jonah got the answer. The answer is Barracuda. Okay, the answer is Barracuda. All right, good work, Jonah. Now, Jonah, I do believe that you already have the um, ebook because you have a um, one of the top memberships. So I'm pretty sure you already have the ebook. But congratulations, Jonah. Had the right answer. Now, or Jonah, let me know if you have the ebook or not, beloved. Let me know if you already have it. If not, I'll send it to you. But I think you already have it. Okay, so now let's get ready for the next one. Reset the clock. This, Jonah, do you have the book already? I'm pretty sure you do, because I think you have the higher, the higher frequency uh, membership. Anybody with the higher frequency membership or the self-elevating gets the ebooks for free with their membership. Okay, so, hey, Ethelene. Okay, so here's the next question. There was one particular fish that I spoke about. And this fish only sees things one way. Just like there's some people that only see things one way. It's a fish that I said only sees things one way. Okay? Jonah, I'm going to send it to you anyway since you're not sure. Okay? This fish only sees things one way. Which fish is this? What's the name of this fish? You have 40 seconds. 40 seconds on the clock. Which, which fish did I say only sees things one way? 30 seconds. Twenty-five seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Time is up. All right, Joan, I just sent you your book. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hotel, please sit down somewhere. Mr. Hotel talking about fried fish. <laughs> okay, Samantha won. Samantha said flounder. That's the answer, flounder, because flounders have two eyes, but both of their eyes are on the same side, on one side of their head. So that's why they can only see things one way. So that's absolutely the flounder. All right, so congratulations to you, beloved. Let me send you your book. That's Samantha for the win. All right, Samantha, your book is on the way. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question. I'm going to do y'all a favor since I'm in a good mood. You're welcome, beloved. I'm going to ask one more question for Juju. Since Juju wanted me to ask one more question or wanted me to keep going, I'm going to ask one more question. Juju, you better have the answer since you want me to ask one more question. All right. Now, here's the last and final question because it's 2 o'clock. And I got some work to do before I start my master class at four. Okay, so here is the last and final question. There was a fish, and this is easy. There was a fish that I said is always slinging something. It's all, I can't tell you what it's slinging because that's in the name, but it's always slinging something on people, on, on other fish. 
And it's just like there's people in life who's always slinging stuff on other folk. This fish, what fish is it? It's one of the fish that I spoke about that is just like a person who's always talking too much or just doing too much, you know, to other people. This fish does the same thing. It throws something on other fish. A uh, what fish is this? You got 40 seconds on the clock. That crazy bitch Ari says she got to catch the replay. That's okay, beloved. For the master class, you got to work tonight. Okay, beloved, that's okay. Get your rest, honey, so you can be punctual at work. You can be functioning well. All right. Uh, so let me see what y'all got. You got 25 seconds left. Mr. Hotel talking about some fried fish. I absolutely cannot. All right. I don't see any answers. You got about 10 seconds left. Where you at, Juju? Where you at? Okay. Samantha called out the answer. Samantha already won, but called out the answer. Time's up. Time's up. Okay. So the answer, <laughs> Juju talking about all no queen. <laughs> Juju, now I gave this one just for you. You didn't know it. Juju. Uh, so the answer was the mud fish. The mud fish is always throwing mud on the other fish. Just like people who throw dirt on other people, people who throw dirt on people's names, people who go out here and be so nefarious and lying and just gossiping and keeping up mess and saying things that aren't true about people. Okay, like Tasha K, when she said that stuff about Cardi B, now she has to pay that $4 million. Yeah, okay. Tasha K is like the mud fish, you see. <laughs> Isn't that what all of these gossip, uh, these uh, YouTube gossip channels? Isn't what they, that what they do best? They sling mud on people. Okay, they dish the dirt. All right. Queen basically gave that answer away. Said Miss Hotel. Exactly, Miss Hotel. Tell them about it, honey. All right. Tell them about. It. Tell them about. It. See, Mister Hotel slinging mud on y'all right now. <laughs> He's slinging mud on y'all right now. Look at him talking about not Tasha K. Yes, Tasha K and you too, because you just slung mud on them. Talking about Queen Darn it gave y'all the answer. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Samantha won. So Samantha, since you already won, I'm just going to send you a different ebook. I'll send you a different ebook this time. And that concludes this broadcast. Let me send you a book real quick. I'm sending you the positive affirmations. All right, so, uh-oh, Hundia said, Queen, what happened to the hoodies? Lord have mercy, Hundia, why did you have to bust me out? Hundia, I had not gotten around to it, beloved, but I promised I'm working on it, okay? I've just been so busy. I get sidetracked real easy sometimes when I have so much to do. Look at that crazy beast, Aries, talking about great question, Hundia. So now y'all want to team up on the Queen? Okay, listen, I'm going to get those hoodies together. I'm glad y'all brought it up, actually. Let me just write a note to myself. See, the thing is, I've been having a problem with the supplier. Now, there's people who make the hoodies, but I want my hoodies to look just like they looked the first time with the metallic gold writing, okay? And I'm not going to settle for less, and I want the same quality and all of that. So I'm having a difficult time getting someone to make them with the metallic gold print. That's the holdup. So I'm going to be getting on that this weekend, okay, or this strong end. Let me write that down. Y'all got me. Y'all got me. They got me, Mr. Hotel. <laughs> Mr. Hotel said, honey, you're slinging mud. <laughs> ah, Juju said, in my defense, I'm still catching up on the vitamins. Juju, sit down somewhere. You got more excuses than a ninja going to jail. The last time you told us, before you went on your winning spree, you told us that your phone was going slow. <laughs> ah, now I'm slinging mother pay attention 
Okay, so with that all being said, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I love y'all to life. I hope you all enjoyed this wonderful, strong end. And I hope that the video has helped you all with some insight or whatever, okay? Now, for those of you who are going to be on the mas in the master class, I can't wait to see you. We're going to be starting promptly at 4.15. I won't be late, all right? So make sure you're not late either, 4.15, and I'll see you all in the chat. All right, until next time, beloveds, I wish you all love, peace, and life. Each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your life.